this hunt is going to be quite a lot different than most of our recent black bear hunts. We're out here on Silver Ridge Peaks with the Hawk Edge CB70, and if you caught the live stream on Monday, you may recall I talked about this. I wanted to just kind of go out and practice a bit. I'd like to hopefully take an eventual Great One Black Bear with the Hawk Edge, and that idea was only reinforced talking in Fabled One's chat in the official The Hunter Discord yesterday. There was some talk about the bow maybe being bugged. Of course, there is the issue where black bear kind of immediately stand on their hind legs when you fire even a rifle shot. So I don't know what the bow is going to do, and just all those things combined made me want to go for a bow hunt and just kind of see if we could get somewhat consistent success. Now, this hunt is going to be naturally a lot slower than a normal hunt, just because we're required to get so much closer and spend the time to actually do so. We're not going to be able to get as many kills, but I still want to kind of see how we can do. I will say, I did not see an accuracy issue there, which is one of the things that had been talked about at least at 20 meters with the single pin sight, which I actually don't have any sight equipped, it's just the kind of standard sight with nothing on it. Looks fine, that looks to be exactly where I aimed. Now, I don't want to take the shot on a great one while it's standing, we've seen it time and time again shooting a bear while it's standing you can get the shot going right through the chest so that's not something i want to do i do want to practice shots where the bear is standing on all fours but as i mentioned this is going to be a slower hunt and because of that we're only going to probably get maybe six kills with a bow or something like that if we do really well maybe a little bit more luckily there is a lot of footage from the previous almost week since our last black bear video with some trophy bears in there that we're going to work in. So it'll be a little bit of both. It might feel like this video is jumping around a bit, but if we don't include some of those trophy bears in this video, we're going to start getting kind of behind. I've been putting in a lot of time and it started to really pay off. So on the last bear, we went with the spot and stock approach of just getting close without using the color. This time, just to kind of change it up and see if it does any different, I think we'll try to call him in and see if we can get him in range, maybe without getting him to stand up, but we still want to get kind of close, get ourselves into a good position, and as we head over here, we'll go and take a look at the first trophy bear of this video from the past week of grinding, and if you caught Friday's live stream over on Twitch, you may recall a max weight black bear that had the stream buffer right at the time of the shot. This one kind of makes up for that. Perhaps it is somewhat fitting. We have our second guaranteed diamond black bear of the grind. 23 to 26, of course, diamond is 22.8, so there is no way that could troll. I guess the one way where it could be not guaranteed is if the shot ends up not being on the mark, so we'll make sure that he's going to slow down. But we had one of these on Friday's live stream, and basically, right at the moment I took the shot, Either the internet cut out or something happened, and I don't, I haven't even gone back to look at it yet, but I don't think there's any actual shot footage from the stream. So maybe good to get another one here where the recording's not going to cut out due to internet and we'll have the actual shot footage, but pretty cool. That, I mean, unless we somehow didn't get along, which I can't see with the way he went down, that would be diamond number seven. And I think that now has our diamond count above our rare count. 13 trophy black bears, 7 diamonds, and 6 rares. Just a matter of how big this guy is going to be, and I would think, especially given the fact the one on stream was a max weight 23.9, he should be pretty big. Not only does it have the same score estimate as the stream, by the way, it's actually in the same basic area. The last one, I think, was right down here, so not too far. This is yet again a dusky fur type, go figure. This one... Max score, not max weight, 24 on the trophy rating, 288.9 for the weight, so 1.1 kg below the max weight. Interesting how that worked out. We had a max weight go 0.1 below max score, and now a max score basically 1 below max weight. So it ends up being that our first max weight black bear of the grind is a 23.99 from Friday's livestream, and then we get one just below max weight that is the max score. I think this spot is going to work for our level 7 though. He is actually almost in range to begin with, but just for the sake of trying it. Let's see if we can call him in and get him to 20-ish meters. If we do find a great one, and if we do confirm the bow is at least effective enough to try it, 
20 meters is probably the range that we're going to go with. Now this is something to consider. I think if we spam the caller enough, he probably will come in. But it doesn't always seem to go that way. If we got a stock in, we will. The nice thing is most lakes on Silver Ridge Peaks have the reeds. Looks like he is going to come in. But the reeds can't hide you, so we could probably make it work. Definitely, though, in an area like this without as many trees. Having the caller probably is a good idea. Apparently, he is kind of noticing us from there. I don't really know why. We're fully hidden, the wind is fine. It could be Sir 12, actually, I don't know. Maybe it would be best to leave him behind. If it stands up again, we'll probably just take the shot. That's looking like about the limit. Seems like whatever is happening there is making him stand up. Now we got a hit again. Despite the front facing chest shot, looks like an okay hit, but clearly not a good enough one. It is starting to bring him down, but the sake of this hunt isn't to kill a bunch of bears with a bow. It's for testing purposes. I don't know how we just did that, but we're gonna kill him with the 308 for the sake of saving time, and mostly because I want to see what this looks like. Oh, that was 47 meters. I had no idea we were shooting that far. It felt like he was a whole lot closer, so that's nothing to do with the bow. That's me. Brain shot on the follow-up, not bad. So again, I don't see an issue with accuracy. I see an issue with completely misjudging the range. Now, I don't know why he knew we were there, unless it was having the dog. Let's, for the next one, and it's getting late, we're going to jump over to the Mule Deer Outpost and see if we can get one from there. Let's leave the dog behind and see if that kind of impacts it. Now, this lake is probably my biggest worry when it comes to the black bear and potentially trying to take really any bear with a bow from here. I'm not sure if spot and stock is feasible. And just to take the time to explain my main plan, if we can get a great one drinking, what I'd like to do is spot and stock so I don't have to worry about the color and try to take the shot while the bear is actually drinking. The thought process being that it should sort of prevent that bug where they stand on their high legs immediately and can even entirely avoid or cause a bad shot with a rifle, let alone a slower moving arrow. But that is what I'm thinking of doing. And of course, this lake being the Mule Deer Outpost down here in the Southwest, it's got by far the most bears. That probably means it's at least the most likely to end up the spot where a great one spawns. I've seen so many in the community from this spot and this is kind of something that I do want to practice. That's really why we're out here today, to do a little practice and just kind of learn what works and what doesn't. So what I'm thinking is that going up through the trees here is going to be the move. And we'll see if we can get in range to some of these ones down here in this corner. I mean, looking at this, it's just really going to depend on where whatever bear we're trying to shoot with a bow is actually at. When we're really at the last tree and still 40 meters away 30 something from that level five it's not going to be easy that's for sure i i don't know about this spot and again that's why we're here to practice so i think what we got to do we're going to try to take the five since it's a higher level we're going to spot him again and we're going to try to hopefully before the spotting outline goes away get a shot into the lungs or possibly heart now what might be interesting, and this is maybe a little less, oh my god, there's a lot of bears in there. Maybe a little less uh, practice and more so grinding. Or maybe all the bears are gonna go that way. I thought maybe some would run to us. There are just a ton coming out of there. There was even a mythical that we hadn't even seen that was somewhere down here in the reeds. And again, I think that kind of illustrates the point. If they're a little further in, if the one that we want to get is a little further in, I just don't know how doable it's gonna be. Now 35 meters, accuracy not an issue, didn't get the bug where they stand up, but that really doesn't mean we're not going to encounter it just because we do things in the same way. He's not actively in that drinking animation, and I don't mean just drinking like when you spot it and it shows drinking, I mean head down actually in the animation of drinking. That is the plan for what I want to do, so we're going to reset the time here. Probably should have shot a couple of these, but we'll just let them go and continue with our practice. And we'll head to another lake and maybe try to set up what 
what I would consider the ideal. Trying to take the shot while broadside in that drinking animation and just see if we can even do it. This really wasn't the plan, but I do kind of want to test what happens with a tower being involved. Now 40 meters is kind of farther than I want to shoot, but just for the sake of it, again, accuracy is perfect. I have no problem using the bow and, and seemingly hitting exactly where we want. And again, that's just something that's been discussed. I, I'm not saying that I've had issues with it, but I did have to wonder if there were going to be some accuracy problems, and every shot we've taken has hit exactly where we'd expect it to outside of that 47 meter standing shot, but again, the arrow hit where it should have, just not where I expected it to due to misjudging the range. Just a little high, which we aimed high, being that it was 45 and now 40. Lung and vertebrae, I don't know, I think it's looking pretty good, and we're a little bit early right now. That bear, I think, was just getting into its zone, so as we head off to the next spot, I think it's probably a good time to take a look at our second trophy bear of the video, and this one being a level 6 cinnamon that ended up running out of the reeds. I didn't see it initially, ended up spooking it, and really spent a lot more time chasing it than I would have wanted. One of those things where the time spent to go and get it and make sure we make a good shot, especially with a chance of being a gold, is worth the lost kills and a little bit of lost time on the grind overall. Fortunately, we were eventually able to make the shot. It did end up being a silver anyway, so that was a bit of a bummer. I think our third cinnamon black bear all being silver so far. The cool to get another rare, it really doesn't matter how far we get into this grind. Every rare, every level 9, it's always that little bit of optimism that maybe we're making progress. If there is one thing that's becoming absolutely clear, it's that black bear are likely going to be a lot tougher to take with a bow than the red deer or whitetail, and part of it really is the kind of boundaries we have to work with, and the potential bugs of the black bear standing on its hind legs immediately, and even the thing what we've seen with the rifles. When they stand on their hind legs and you take a frontal shot, sometimes the shot just goes through the chest with no impact. There are just those things that we have to work around and deal with that require us to get to a certain range, maybe, as I said, have them in that drinking animation, and it's just going to be tough. Now, I do think it's different when there is that level 10 fabled out in front of you versus a level 6, because naturally I'm probably going to be pushing it going a little too fast as I am right now, just because I want to get this one and then move on to the next one, versus the amount of time and care that goes into trying to get close to something else, but even still, there are definitely a lot of things to worry about that just weren't there for the previous two, but we're going to try this. We're going to try to use the reeds as camo and see if we can get close enough to take him in his drinking animation. And just to show what I was talking about, you can see the little line in the bottom right. There are parts of the reeds that will get you completely hidden. Not all the areas do, but some of them do. And I think maybe that is going to be an important factor. Finding the areas in the reeds at whatever area we may need to do it that will keep us completely hidden and clearly this is not one of them but if we have to we'll crawl all the way there and just i want to test it just to see what happens and i suppose while we're here and slowly crawling over here into range just because it is a really quick one we'll take a look at yet another rare black bear and one that i was super pleased with it was actually at this spot just running down through here, which is a very different thing than bow hunting for sure, when we have guns and the ability to take quick shots with the range and stuff like that. A level 7 blonde runs out in front of us, and this is kind of the opposite of the cinnamon earlier. I knew this was likely to take a lot of time. He presented a perfect shot, super close range on the trot, and I decided to go for it, and it really did pay off. Insta dropped him, which was quite cool to see, honestly. And now our second gold rare, and our second different rare that made gold, our last one being a brown fur type, this one being a blonde. Pretty cool to add that to the list. So would I like a gold cinnamon before we get the great one? It would be cool, but I'm pretty happy having several gold rares with this grind as a whole. The biggest thing obviously left on the list is that great one, and at least the practice today has made me feel good about the shot potential of it. Not that it wasn't fairly predictable, but in the reeds, I can see it being a problem. It's just tough to even see. I think we made him angry for a second there. Unfortunately, all that stalking 
didn't even get a shot off. I didn't even know he was right there until he decided to charge. I guess we'll take him with the 308 just for the sake of the respawn. But if that taught us anything, I think that it's probably... Reeds are going to be a no-go if that happens. Now, the nice thing is, because zones are persistent, if we were to get a great one in that particular scenario, what we probably could do is either potentially alert him, get him to move maybe out of that spot, or even come back multiple times and deal with it that way. But I don't know. That was... It worked. Like, we got plenty close, but I genuinely could not even spot him until we were too close that he just spooked. But on that note, we're going to give it one more try as we messed up a barely gold on that one by shooting it twice with the 308. We're going to go back to the Mule Deer Outpost and I don't know what approach we should take. We can try to take the shot during that drinking animation, maybe? Again, it's just so dependent at this lake in particular where the bear is at. There's just not a lot of cover that we can use to get close but we'll give it a shot we'll try to get close one more time just kind of see what we can do now that is odd i guess they're still nervous from last time there's a time limit on how long they're they'll be nervous for i think and the fact that they're still there after a full run through is interesting good to know maybe something that we could actually work with and I guess a different scenario to kind of practice trying to get close to one over here but even though it's nervous it is still drinking we can still try to use that animation to our advantage and I think we should be able to get into reasonable bow range with that cover as long as he stays there once he goes back to calm he's gonna go back to where his zone normally is so we are a little limited on time which maybe does a decent job of kind of replicating the adrenaline that goes into trying to get a great one because there is that aspect of gotta make this work so maybe it's good practice i think this is about as close as i want to get i don't know if going to the left is going to get us any more cover and this particular scenario brings up yet another question if this was a level 10 and if we can get him into that drinking animation just like that it's so quick but would I take the shot front facing versus broadside? I don't know. I would definitely prefer that he ends up being broadside, but I want to see how it works. The thing is, you almost have to be drawn back and ready. And it is 30 meters. We have to keep that in mind. Whenever he eventually does go to drink, and you can see they do it, but it's not frequent. I think he, he did not do it again, but we ended up taking the shot anyway. And you know... I don't think that one is into a lung. Now, it might have been because I thought we had a neck to aim for, so I was aiming maybe a little lower than I should have. Definitely not something I should be doing on, say, a level 10, but at least in that case, we can go and check and see what it did. I'm curious where we hit, and probably that does a pretty good job of proving I shouldn't take a frontal shot, even if they are drinking. So... I guess the other move would be, and probably what we do, again, kind of like what I talked about with the level 6 earlier, we would take more time to get into that perfect uh, position. Maybe instead of being in, I think it was this brush, we could have gone up and around and gotten broadside. It just is so tough. You never know what is going to supply good cover. Generally, you can look at it and see, but not all the cover works like you might think it does. This has been really interesting. I'm really glad that we went for this hunt. I do think... One thing that I'm really confident in is the accuracy of the bow, at least with the single pin sight, is absolutely fine. I don't think we're going to have any issues hitting where we aim. That doesn't mean that the bear might not move, and it does look like we aim just a little bit too low. Wouldn't have hit him in the neck even if he did go to drink. So 30 meters, frontal, maybe not the best idea. But, like I said, the accuracy seems fine. I think... Our method of trying to deal with the stand-up bug is good. It's just a matter of where might we actually run into one, and can we actually put that into practice? And I guess the other side of it, if we can't, am I willing to take that shot and I guess try to hope that that bug isn't going to occur? I don't know, but before we wrap up, 
I actually have two more trophy bears at this particular lake down here at the Mule Deer Outpost. Two level nines, both of them ending up kind of being in that same area over in the reeds where they are tough to see. And I think it's pretty cool to continue to get the diamonds. I talked about our diamond total on stream on Monday, and I believe these two diamonds were counted in. So I think we are now at eight or nine. I've lost track based on what we've seen uh, and I'll have to go back and check in the trophy lodge perhaps to, to see what that is and I guess these kills were included in today's video so maybe we'll wrap it up with that and actually I'm glad we did because apparently I had lost count or maybe I just was not counting two that I'm misremembering but we actually have 10 diamonds now on this grind and I actually count the rares because I didn't pay attention to that but our gold blonde being up there on the wall We've got a cinnamon here, a second blonde here, this one being a silver. This is today's gold cinnamon from six days ago, it appears. That one being 0.1 below gold, which was pretty unfortunate. Another cinnamon and another blonde here. And of course we have the brown gold out on that side. So that comes out to seven rares and therefore 17 trophy kills in just about 2200 total bears so still under one in 100 well over one in 200 somewhere in between i think that's still a pretty decent rate but all in all based on the main point of today's video going out with the bow and just kind of testing it out i feel like it should be doable i do think it's going to be tough but that is kind of the point of trying to use the bows on the great ones so we'll see what happens whether that is a day away a week away or much much longer at least we practice it and know what to expect so anyway that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.